In this experiment, you will use the techniques of extraction and purification as you separate a two-component mixture containing one compound each from the following possible categories, carboxylic acids, organic amines, and neutral organic compounds. You are to separate these two compounds from each other, isolate them from solution, and purify them. Since you do not know which combination you have been given, acid and base, acid and neutral, or base and neutral, you will proceed as if you are separating all three compounds from each other. It is important to note that one of your flasks will be empty at the end of this experiment. You will be given a well-mixed sample of the mixture that you are to separate. It will consist of one gram each of two unknown compounds. Place this mixture in a large test tube and add 15 to 20 milliliters of diethyl ether. Stir the mixture to dissolve as much solid as possible. Check to make sure that the stopcock of the separatory funnel is closed and then transfer the solution into a separatory funnel that is supported by an iron ring. Rinse the test tube two times with additional 10 milliliter portions of ether, each time transferring the rinse solution to the separatory funnel. Add eight milliliters of 1.5 molar aqueous hydrochloric acid to the separatory funnel. Be sure that you can tell which layer is organic and which is aqueous by considering the densities. Stopper the funnel and cautiously mix the contents. Vent the funnel, pointing it away from your neighbor, and then shake the mixture more vigorously with frequent venting. Replace the separatory funnel in the iron ring, remove the top stopper, and allow the layers to separate completely. Extraction of the ether solution with HCl will cause any organic amine to move into the aqueous layer, leaving any organic acid or neutral compounds behind in the organic layer. Drain off the lower layer into a 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask labeled flask one. Remember, do not discard any layers until the end of the experiment. Repeat the extraction with five milliliters of additional 1.5 molar aqueous HCl. Mix well as before, separate, and combine this aqueous layer with the original aqueous HCl layer. Add eight milliliters of 1.5 molar aqueous sodium hydroxide to the ether in the separatory funnel and shake well with venting. Subsequent extraction of the ether solution with dilute sodium hydroxide solution will allow the carboxylic acid to react with the NaOH, forming a water-soluble sodium carboxylate. Use pH paper to test the pH of the aqueous layer. If it is basic, separate and drain off the lower layer into a 25 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, labeled flask two. Repeat the extraction with five milliliters of additional 1.5 molar aqueous NaOH and add it to the original basic extract in flask two. Now add 15 milliliters of a saturated aqueous solution of sodium chloride, called brine, to the ether in the separatory funnel. Shake the mixture thoroughly, allow the layers to separate, and draw off the lower layer into a flask or beaker. Carefully drain the remaining ether layer into a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask labeled flask three. Then add about four grams of anhydrous sodium sulfate to the ether extract and set it aside. As a check to make sure that you have added enough drying agent, gently swirl the liquid. The drying agent should move freely without clumping and the liquid should look completely clear, but not necessarily colorless, with no cloudiness. Allow the ether solution to sit with the drying agent for 10 to 15 minutes. Meanwhile, go back to working with flasks one and two. After these two liquid layers are separated, the different aqueous layers can be neutralized with acid or base as appropriate, causing any dissolved ions to be neutralized and precipitate out of solution. Calculate the volume of six molar sodium hydroxide necessary to neutralize all of the hydrochloric acid used. Swirl the flask contents and check the pH of the solution while continuing to add NaOH until the contents of the flask are basic. Similarly, calculate the volume of six molar hydrochloric acid necessary to neutralize all of the sodium hydroxide used. Add this volume of six molar HCl to flask two. Check the pH of the solution and continue adding HCl until the contents of the flask are acidic. Cool flasks one and two in an ice bath for 10 to 15 minutes. Isolate any solids present via Buchner funnel vacuum filtration and wash the crystals on the filter paper with a small quantity of ice water to rinse. Decant the ether from flask three away from the sodium sulfate into a teared flask that contains a boiling chip. This means that you should note the weight of the flask containing the boiling chip so that you can subtract this weight later and find the mass of the neutral solid. 
Take care to leave all of the drying agent behind. Wash the drying agent with an additional ether to ensure a complete transfer of the product into your teared flask. Evaporate the ether on a steam bath in the hood. A gentle steam of air pointing into the flask will speed up the evaporation. Stop heating when no more bubbles are visible. Determine the weight of the crude neutral product by subtracting the weight of the flask from the amount that you originally teared. Finally, you will need to identify the two compounds based on their acid brace properties and their melting points. If the melting point does not provide an unequivocal identification of a compound, a mixed melting point may be useful. Known samples of all six possible compounds are available in the lab. It is important to remember that when you complete this experiment, one of the three flasks will be empty and you will not end with three products. For the purpose of illustrating all potential outcomes and procedures, the mixture in this video contained all three compound categories, acid, base, and neutral, instead of a two-component combination.